In this video, I'll show you how to get a consistent volume level between multiple voice tracks inside Audacity. Okay, so here's a common problem. You've got one voice track, two voice tracks, three, or maybe in this case, 15 voice tracks, all recorded at different volume levels with different speakers, some speaking louder, some quieter. How do you get those tracks consistent in volume? I'm gonna give you some easy answers here. So we're in Audacity. Thank you to David Hunter for sending me the files and giving me permission to use them in a video. So you'll see this is Audacity with 15 tracks all over the place. Now, what I did first of all, before I even started this video, is I went to tracks and I went to mix and mix stereo down to mono. So I'm only working with mono tracks now, otherwise I just see double the track, and this is a radio drama. It's mono, it's voice anyway, so that's fine for me. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and listen to this voice track, voice track one up here. And we're sort of around minus 30, perhaps even lower. Then we'll listen to track two. That's up at minus 18. You can see this is a levels issue here, can't you? And we'll go over here, listen to this. Best for the twins, of course. Minus 24 to minus 18, which is wonderful. Let's go to this one down here. Now, Harry. You put your feet Between minus 12 and minus 24. So everything's all over the place. Volume level's inconsistent. This is not a good experience for your listener. So how do we sort this out? Actually, quite easily. So I'm going to hit Control A or Command A if I'm on a Mac, and that's going to select every single track because we want to work this through on every track. We don't want to go through individually and make volume changes and envelopes and all that stuff. We want something automated and easy. So now I'll go into the effect menu of Audacity. I'll look under volume and compression, and there's this really cool feature that I really highly recommend you use. It's called loudness normalization. Now, the good news about using this effect is it doesn't change any of the audio you've already recorded. So there's no compression going on, there's no volume level changes to the track. It's simply running a loudness algorithm to try and match each track to be the same volume level. This is what we want. So loudness normalization, I advise you make sure that all the settings are left as default, as this is really the best. Uh, you've got minus 23 luffs here. We're working on perceived loudness, not RMS, which is like an algorithm. It looks at the whole track and normalizes it. Uh, everything should be here. Um, you don't want to tick the first option and you definitely want to tick the second option. So with that done, we'll click apply and we'll wait for it to go through each track. Okay, now with that done, you'll see that some tracks increased in volume, some maybe decreased a little bit. It's done the loudness normalization. Let's have a quick listen now and see what our levels are. Have you informed, madam? Okay, we're between minus 12 and minus 18. And I will not tolerate. Between minus 12 and minus 18, this is looking really good. I really do not have any. Between minus 12 and 18, and these are all separate tracks now we're working Stuck with. in a snowdrift. Between minus 12 and minus 18, well, that's fabulous, okay. We could call it a day here. We could end the video here and say tutorial done. All you need to do is select all the tracks, effect, loudness normalize under volume and compression, and click OK to the default settings. That would help most people. But maybe you're a little OCD and you want to add a bit of compression to finalize things. I recommend doing this. Uh, don't go too heavy on the compression, otherwise some of the tracks will be unnatural. But again, you'll find compressor under the volume and compression section of the effects menu. You click it, and I suggest you set something very light up. So threshold here, we want it maybe minus 20. Maybe if you're working on a radio drama, you could afford to go less, minus 15 like this. But I'm going to say minus 20. Minus 20 dB is a good default. We'll leave the noise floor as is. Ratio, 3 to 1. That might be a bit harsh. If we find it's compressing our voiceover and flattening it out and making it sausage-like, uh, we'll take that number down to two, but I'm going to leave it at three to the moment. Attack release should be right over to the left, as short as possible. Um, now, this is an interesting option. Make up gain for zero dB after compressing. What this does is it compresses your audio, which naturally squashes down the loud parts and makes it a bit quieter. So this loudness normalizes your audio back up to nearly zero dB, which is fantastic, meaning you don't need to do a normalize after compression, which is... It's such a hassle anyway. Uh, leave this one unticked, compressed based on peaks. Don't tick that. And click apply. Again, this will take a little while. Okay, and you'll see in just a matter of a couple of minutes, it's gone through all 15 tracks and compressed, and you'll see now how all of the waveforms look very consistent in volume level. So not only have we loudness normalized, but we've also compressed, and now we should have consistent volume levels across this whole Audacity project. I hope this has helped you out, and if you've got any questions about matching volume levels in Audacity, be sure to post them in the comments down below. Thumbs up! 
subscribe for more. Music Radio Creative.